Hey folks, before we start our cloud journey, uh, let's make a target here as well. The target of this video is just to have 200 comments. Let's see if we can make that. And the like target is just of 500. I hope we'll be able to make this within 24 hours of the upload of the video. If not, please help me to complete this target. Hey there everyone, Hitesh here and welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to take care about what is cloud computing. How is it different from the DevOps and are those two terms very similar and some questions we'll be answering uh, in order to make sure that you have a smooth journey in the cloud computing. Whenever I teach any subject, I always make sure that I always talk about why we are learning the subject, what's the scope of this subject and some common FAQs that we can answer with this one. This is exactly the same video, but this is intended for all those people who want to start a journey in cloud computing or DevOps or similar kind of a role and have a big picture, a clear idea of what is about to come, what to expect with this field and how to get started with this one. So this is exactly that video. In this video, we're going to be first uh, talking about a couple of questions, then I have a few questions that I've written for you and we'll be answering them. First and foremost, uh, is there any difference between cloud computing and DevOps? That's the first question. Uh, yes, there is a lot of difference between the cloud computing and DevOps. And let me just uh, give you a brief heads up. Uh, be very careful when you're using the word DevOps because a lot of people might just straightforward jump at you uh, just because merely you have used the word DevOps. The moment you say that, hey, is this DevOps? Is it that DevOps? There will always be somebody who will try to correct you as the answer. So it doesn't really matter if you pick up the official definition, uh, you say that DevOps is a mindset or you just say DevOps are the tools that you have to learn, which works majorly in the cloud or operations. There will be somebody who would be absolutely trying to correct you. So don't worry about them. But yes, uh, to answer your question, yes, there is a difference between the cloud computing and DevOps. Uh, cloud computing is something which we'll discuss in a minute because we have an official question for that. Uh, DevOps, yes, of course, officially it's more of a mindset. It's how the team works and functionals and flows. Uh, but rather it's more of a developer plus the operations and majority of the work is of the operation side and less of the developer side but if you as a developer if you have knowledge of little bit operations and ci cd pipelines it's great uh, but always all the time companies and those professionals will say that uh, devops is more about having a mindset of how the team flows and less friction between developers and operation but what I have noticed uh, while working with some of the great minds and talking to them and studying the cloud and DevOps for almost two years is that, yes, DevOps to some extent works majorly on operation side. You learn a lot of tools and how those tools functionals and how those tools integrate seamlessly with the developers and making their experience a little bit better. That's uh, what can be loosely con called as a DevOps. And yes, the pathway of the DevOps includes a lot of cloud knowledge. So make sure. Uh, if you are planning to become a DevOps engineer or looking forward for those roles, your journey will still go with the cloud because you'll be managing a lot of operations and those operations doesn't happen in the local machine or local system. They are majorly in the cloud centric environment. Doesn't matter if it is an Azure or GCP or AWS, it's, it's some kind of a cloud, maybe on-prem cloud, but it is some kind of a cloud. So that's your first question being answered. Now, I'll share my iPad screen with you to give you a brief big picture overview about uh, this is the video you should be watching before getting started your cloud or DevOps journey. So these questions will help you to understand that what should I look forward for it? What can I expect from the upcoming videos and how, how all about that? Uh, by the way, in case you haven't yet subscribed so far to the channel, go ahead and hit that. We are hitting our road to 1 million subscribers. So please, please do contribute in that. And I'll make sure that this year I'll help you to nail down a lot of certificates in the AWS as well as a lot of code as well. So that we'll be doing. Now let me share my iPad screen with you. So this is our iPad screen and we'll be answering a lot of questions. Of course, starting with the first of all, what is cloud computing? If you'll ask me, uh, yes, for a lot of study about the cloud computing, I still stick to the, my original definition, which is it's all about handling somebody's computer. Now that somebody might be Jeff Bezos uh, from AWS or might be somebody else, but it's all about handling somebody's computer. The better you are handling somebody's computer, that's what the cloud computing is. 
And cloud computing actually gives you the ability to have almost unlimited resources. You want 10 GB of RAM or 100 GB of RAM, it's just a click of a button. You want a storage of one TB or one petabyte, it's just a click of a button. So you have infinite amount of resources lying around just for you at a fraction of cost. Uh, that's all about cloud computing. That is your cloud computing, you learn all these things. Uh, via the cloud computing and especially the virtualization, uh, we get the chance of renting a computer which is virtualized and we can host all of our applications in that. It is a fascinating world. All of your open AI to the basic uh, var cell, everything is cloud computing. They give you the servers, they give you the ability to have computation, storage, networking and everything. And we just mastered of how we can do that while sitting at our home with just a browser. So that's basically your cloud computing. It's a fascinating world and I promise you, you will absolutely love it. The next question is, who are the major players in the world of cloud computing? There are plethora of them. Usually, you will see that when it comes to the major player kind of a question, you'll see there are only three contenders, which are AWS, Azure, and GCP. Of course, uh, AWS from Amazon, Azure from Microsoft, and GCP from the Google. Of course, uh, depends on which YouTuber you are following or which news outlet you are following. Uh, there is always a race between Azure and GCP. GCP took this much of uh, the market share, Azure took this much of the market share. Uh, without putting any contest that AWS is still the biggest leader of all and probably will remain for the next good few years. Startups are on AWS, uh, big of the companies, their whole lot of system is on AWS. Uh, yes, there is a fight between Azure and GCP, but uh, hands down, this is one of the biggest contender out there. But this is not all about it. There are many other players which are not being talked that much because People don't consider them as a cloud, but they are 100% cloud. Anything that you see on somebody else's machine, that is cloud. So there is a digital ocean, a big, big contender there. There is even a cloud service being offered by IBM and Oracle as well. And not only these, there are other people who rent out your servers and VPCs and whatnot. Uh, like there's a Vulture. There are a lot of companies which actually provides you probably at a fraction of cost of AWS as you are in GCP. Yes, that happens. So yes, there are many players in this and the field and the domain is pretty wide. Now, the big question that you have been waiting for, who can learn cloud? Now, a lot of time, people think that the IT is all about programming and the data structures and algorithm, but the IT is beyond that. You have a lot of designers, you have a lot of graphic designers, you have a lot of people who knows networking, a lot of people who knows DevOps, cloud, and they have to, nothing to do with the programming and the DSA part of it. Anybody can learn cloud. Maybe you are a manager who comes from a non-tech background. Maybe you are looking forward to start a journey in the IT. That's where you can learn cloud. If you know your programming, that's always advantageous. That's always great. But in order to actually master the cloud computing, you don't need that much of programming. In fact, I know some of the people personally who are great in the world of cloud and infrastructure, but... They don't do programming very well. Even writing a loop is a struggle for them. And yes, they are having great packages and working at a great companies, but they know they're networking in and out. If you'll ask them, they understand a lot about the infrastructure. That's where I say that, hey, almost anybody can start learning the cloud. If programming is not your friend, if you don't like programming or data structure or something, I think cloud is one of the way that you can go for, but definitely there are other fields like UI designers, UX designers, developers, UX, and uh, there are a lot of fields. Cloud is one of them. Now, the next big question is, how much programming do I need to know? Uh, you don't need much. If you know, that's great. Like for example, if you know Python or JavaScript, uh, you'll be having some advantage at some of the tools, but no, you don't need programming that much for that. It's cloud infrastructure. It requires more of a common sense and IQ rather than programming skills. So uh, if you don't like programming, you don't need programming in the cloud computing. And uh, somebody who comes from a non-tech background, I think this is a great place to get started. I have even seen uh, some of the people who were into the lawyer business and they moved into the cloud and are and are driving insane amount of money. Uh, they're working at a big corporate jobs. They are also consulting a lot of startups to manage their clouds and keep their bills low. So yes, if a lawyer can do it, a lot of people, other people can do it. Next big question is, will it cost money? Uh, it depends, but certainly I would say, yes, it will cost money. A lot of people don't learn or are not able to master the cloud because they are always afraid of this cost part. If I'll make an account on AWS and forgot some machine, will it cost me millions of dollars? 
Uh, generally not. The people at AWS, Azure, GCP, all these corporations are very kind to the learners and students who are trying to test there. So if even accidentally you open this machine and, and just kind of forgot that, uh, yes, there will be bill, but these are easily waived off if the situation is very genuine. And if you'll always be afraid of the part that will it cost me money, I think you will never learn. A lot of time, people also look for the solutions that, hey, give me a sandbox where I don't have to worry about money. You learn very less in those environments. The real cloud, uh, what you are going to learn happens when you actually create an account on any service that you are looking forward to learn, spend a couple of dollars onto it, and then start working with that. And I always say that you always learn uh, to swim where the water is deep. So make sure that you create an account on AWS or Azure or GCP and try it. It might cost you 100 rupees or 1000 rupees for some services that you tried and you opened up and ran a few servers on that. That is good. That is good. Because ultimately, the job that you're looking up for is in production, not any uh, toy environment. And production do cost money. If you're not cautious about how to spend money or if you don't have an idea how to spend money, uh, probably you will never become a good cloud engineer or DevOps engineer. So make sure you're ready to spend that much amount of money. I'm not talking about the money perspective from buying the courses or taking live classes. That might cost you from different range, from uh, 400 rupees uh, to uh, a range of 40,000. There are a lot of courses available for that. Each one of them have their dif different justice, but I'm not going to go there. All I'm saying is never be afraid of spending some amount of money in the world of cloud computing. Now, especially talking about the case in India, these days, uh, Indian cards are also accepted on AWS. Probably your cards are very old or you're using Rupee card. Uh, just make sure you have a Visa or MasterCard. Visas usually do great on AWS that I've seen. Uh, so have that kind of cards and get some credits on AWS and start working with that. Even don't worry about the free tier. A lot of things that I'll be teaching you, obviously, I'll try to keep it under free tier, uh, but I'm not going to skip any knowledge just because it was under the paid tier. So expect that. I'll be expecting that I'll show you every demo that is possible, the, everything that you can learn. Next up is how is the learning curve? It's not that steep compared to programming or anything that I've learned so far. Uh, the learning curve is actually very fun in the cloud. There are some theoretical concepts in which you really want to go deep, for example, hypervisors or maybe virtualization. How does that happen? How does the virtualizer help you uh, to divide your CPU between different machines? They are fun concepts to learn, but they are very interesting. There is no higher steep curve to learn the cloud computing. It's very normal, very easy. And what I've seen so far, it's, it's generously uh, easy. Again, what are the career opportunities? The career opportunity will depend on exams and DIY. That means do it yourself. How much hands-on knowledge you have about the cloud and how much you have done in the exams. And by the exam, I'm talking about the certification. So I'll take these two things together. What are the career opportunities and are certifications worth? First of all, the cloud certification are still worth it. And not just the cloud, some of the tools in the clouds that are used, their certifications are pretty good. One of the common ones which you might have seen is Gates, which is Kubernetes exam. These exams, including the AWS exams, which we are going to study very soon on this channel, uh, which is the CCP, Certified Cloud Practitioner. As you go more higher in the cloud range, these certifications uh, take their values a little bit higher to the notch. They're still not your ordinary certificates like that one you get from course completion certificate from XYZ website or uh, some local companies out there, local, international, whatever that phase is. The certifications in the cloud actually comes directly from AWS, GCP and uh, Azure. The tougher the certificate, the higher the value it is. For example, if you go somewhere out with just a certified cloud practitioner, you will be said as okay. But on the other hand, if you go to some organization, say, hey, I'm a certified DevOps by AWS, that still has a value. Why? I'll tell you. The reason for these certification having higher value is because, first of all, you pay a high fees amount, uh, somewhere range to $100 to $150. And if you fail in these exams, all of your $100 are gone. And these exams are not just you tick mark that and you get the dumps. No, some of these exams actually gets you on the hands-on practices as well. You have to configure some machines. Uh, you have to do some of the settings and all these configuration in the cloud. And that is why these certificates still do matter because they test you in the real world scenario. Not only that, once you actually clear three to four exams in AWS, 
they actually opens up their own internal portal where all of their vendors to which they are selling their services, AWS is selling to a lot of vendors and organization. If there is any vacancy in those organization, they actually try to link up those certified professionals to those organization directly. I also talked to the VP of uh, Google Cloud, and yes, it was a great honor to meet him. And he said, we are also looking forward to do something similar where anybody who is professionally certified in the Google Cloud exam will try to match them up with the organization who are actually using our product as well. So it's a pipeline right now, but I think very soon it will be available to all of you. So all I'm saying is, yes, certification in the GCP and the AWS, they still matter a lot. Uh, but people who are doing just one certificate, the initial basic level, it's it's not going to be that fruitful compared to if you stick here and do two, three certifications and all of that, it will be great. Yes, there is a lot of career opportunities in that. If there is a startup, if there is a company, there is a product that they are building, they need to put out this product in front of the market. If that's going to happen, that's where the cloud engineers, DevOps engineers, operation engineers are going to be super, super helpful. Uh, your primary job is to move the product into the public, take care of its scalability, keep the bill as low as possible, and make sure it is available all the time for all the people, regardless of what scale it is. So it's a very challenging domain. You learn a lot every single day. Uh, great challenges, great exciting world, and the innovation is on to the very next level in this field. And that's why I got always excited about the cloud and talking more about it. So I think this gives you a great big picture idea of how things are there and what to expect from this field. I hope it brings up a lot of clarity before we start our with our very first exam, which is Certified Cloud Practitioner. So hope that helps you. And from the very next video, I'll walk you through some of the AWS exams and guides and how to prepare for them. And then very soon we'll start our playlist for the very first exam, which is Certified Cloud Practitioner. This video is a part of a playlist of before uh, moving into the cloud or before cloud, whatever I named that. Uh, we'll keep it like that way. So make sure you tell it to your friends that, hey, there is a cloud series going on and you can learn a lot of practical about it. Make sure you have hit the subscribe as well and uh, just go for it. All right, that's it for this video. Let's go ahead and catch up in the next video.